thank you, last Can Corla, and can I thank the Can Corla for giving me the opportunity to raise this uh, important issue on the floor of the House this morning. Minister, I want to raise with you the lack of, of school places uh, for children with autism, which is now forcing students from uh, South Roscommon to travel up to 100 kilometres each day to a a avail of an education. I have two children in South Roscommon that are, are travelling up to 100 kilometres, another two children that I'm aware of uh, in County Westmeath. And this is a daily journey for those children from County Roscommon uh, over to Glenamady uh, from next September to access second level education um, in uh, a, an autism specific class. In fact, Minister, I've spoken with a, a local campaigner, Claire Early, and Senator Michal Carrigy, who raised this issue in the Shannon last week. And between us, we have figured out that there are 11 children uh, leaving primary school in the catchment of, of Athlone and South Roscommon next month who have no local autism specific uh, school place. Uh, now we, are, uh, we all know that children with autism require routine and their parents know that the transition from primary school to secondary school is going to be a challenging one. What, uh, what, they, what are they to say to their child as they say goodbye to their classmates? What answer are they to give to the other six class children when they talk about where they're going to school uh, next September? Minister, securing an appropriate school placement for uh, their child is an anxious time for every single parent, particularly so for a child with additional needs, uh, and it makes it an extremely uh, ex stressful experience. And these children now, if they are lucky enough to get a placement, will have to travel up to 100 kilometres daily to get access to a school. And as I say, Minister, these are the ones that have been lucky enough to secure a school placement at the moment. In fact, on average, these 11 children are facing a combined weekly <coughs> travel journey of over 4,500 kilometres to go to school because of the failure to provide autism classes in local schools, despite the fact that this was known to the department for the last eight years. Minister, this is just not good enough. We're coming to the end of the school term now, and parents need certainty, and the pupils themselves deserve it. There are also a number of parents of children already in the local post-primary school system who believe that they, their children would make better progress in an autism-specific class if one was available. Senator Michal Carrigy and I believe uh, that there is a need to accommodate in the region of 15 to 18 post-primary pupils within the Athlone catchment area. And Minister, we in Athlone have a, a pride ourselves with the comprehensive range and standards uh, of schools and colleges that we have. Yet, we have children, our own children uh, who should be entitled to an education in their own town, along with their schoolmates, along with their brothers and sisters, uh, who will not be able to avail of that. And I don't think it's too much to ask that we provide that to them. Now, Minister, I know last night that you tweeted uh, that you're going to invoke Section 37 or, of the Education Act 1998 to direct schools to make school places available in areas which uh, desperately require additional special education needs places. One of those places, Minister, is at loan at the moment at post-primary school level. And Minister, I'm asking you if you will give a commitment here this morning that you will invoke Section 37 within the uh, catchment area of Athlone to ensure that these children are not uh, spending four and a half thousand kilometres uh, every single week trying to access an education. Thank you, uh, Deputy, for raising this question today. Um, and I know Senator Micheál Carrigy, as you mentioned, uh, has, a, has an interest, obviously, in this area and has discussed it with you at length. Um, I, I just say at the outset that, obviously, I'm the first Minister for Special Education, um, and uh, there are a number of different measures that we have put in place over the last year in terms of ensuring that we have sufficient capacity to meet the, the growing demand uh, in particular areas, and not just in Dublin and Cork, but obviously in Athlone and Roscommon and other areas as well. What the, the National Council for Special Education are saying to me at present, and I will be meeting them again tomorrow, and I will bring up uh, Athlone uh, and Roscommon, uh, they are saying to me that at present they are confident that they will meet the, the special demands uh, for uh, special class places and indeed special school places uh, for September uh, for both Roscommon 
and Athlone. Uh, currently in Athlone, Moat and Roscommon, there are 42 special class places for autism students in post-primary. Um, and there are also uh, a deputy, and I'm not sure if you're aware of the fact that there there's a, will be an opening of two new uh, post-primary special classes for, from September of this year in Skilvera Gone Small in Roscommon and also Skilvera in, in Strokestown. So that will be an additional uh, 12 places there as well. Um, for any of those children in Athlone, I think you may have mentioned that there are eight children in Athlone. Uh, the National Council for Special Education is also telling me through their CNOs that they will have sufficient capacity for those children uh, for September of this year. But I will say to you in, in, in a direct response to your question <clears throat> that if it is the case that there are not sufficient places uh, for children with additional needs in the areas that you've mentioned, then I will have no hesitation uh, in instigating Section 37A, particularly in post-primary schools. Um, there, there is to my mind and from, from the, 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 um, the, the demographics that I have seen from the geographical information system, um, it seems to me that there is this gap between primary and post-primary in particular, not just in your areas but in other areas throughout the country, and that is not satisfactory. Um, and I have to say, uh, and you'll be aware of this, Deputy, that the majority of special classes um, and indeed places in special schools are created via collaboration and ongoing engagement with schools um, in, in, in a cordial way uh, and in a way that is constructive. Um, and I am reluctant to use Section 37A because it is a blunt instrument, but nevertheless, it is there for a reason. Uh, it, is, it is a statutory um, mechanism that is specifically tasked to me as Minister for Special Education, and I will use it uh, where I need to use it. Now, I do think that the force ca casting model that we have put in place um, since last year has already uh, borne fruit uh, in certain areas and the planning and building unit is now working directly with the national councils for special education in a way that it wasn't before on an integrated planning and forecasting process so it shares its geographical system with the national for council for special education so that we can see building projects in real time uh, in each geographical area, and that's absolutely critical. Um, and that is on top of the fact that we also have a commitment for the very first time from the Department of Education last year that all new schools, and I'm finishing last year, that all new schools uh, from last year will automatically provide special class facilities um, and indeed sensory rooms going forward so that we don't have this perennial problem uh, year on, year on. Thank you, Minister. Deputy. Minister. First of all, can I thank you for your response? Can I thank you for your commitment to invoke Section 37 uh, if required? Can I say to you, Minister, though, that uh, while the NCSE have told you that they've confidence that they'll meet the needs, they haven't told the parents that. The parents that I have spoken to, the parents uh, that Claire Early has spoken to, the parents that Michal Carrigy has spoken to, have been offered places either in Longford Town or in Glenamady in North East Galway, and they are local parents in Athlone, that's what they've been offered. Now, Minister, the reality is, uh, and this is outside of your remit, but the department has 93 months to get this right. We're now three months away from those children going into second level, and they haven't got it right to date. We're one month away from those children leaving primary school, and they have not got any indication that they will be provided with a service in their own local catchment, along with their brothers and sisters, along with their neighbours, along with their classmates. Now, Minister, presently there are only three primary schools and just one second level school providing autism specific classes in the wider Athlone area, which is insufficient to meet the current needs, and this must be urgently addressed. The primary schools with ASD classes are St Paul's in Leicester Street, uh, St Joseph's uh, in Summer Hill on the Connacht side of the town and Cousin on the, Le the Leinster side of the town. At second level we have just one school, Colosh to Ciaran in Summer Hill that has uh, autism specific classes. There are 57 primary school pupils in local autism classes in Athlone, Bandeslo and South Roscommon. Despite the demand for more places, no new classes are being planned for this September. 
And as I've said, the situation at second level is even more stark, with just 23 students with autism being accommodated at present between the schools in Athlone and Banisloe, and children Thank facing a 100 kilometre daily return trip. It's unacceptable, Thank Minister. You, um, and, and I know your commitment uh, to this area, along with uh, Senator uh, Micheál Carrigy. Uh, I mean, the first thing to say, uh, uh, as we know, uh, that children have a right to an education under the Constitution, and you know, it's my job to vindicate that right for them. Um, and the first thing that we have to do is find them a special class place, or should I say, an appropriate placement, whether a special class place or mainstream or a special school. And the second thing then, then is that lo is looked at is the location. And obviously, in an ideal scenario, you would have a child with additional needs, or any child for that matter, attending a school in their locality. And it has happened in the past and in, this, in the present time that that hasn't been possible uh, for, for practical reasons, for, for capacity reasons, and for other legitimate reasons um, that have been offered to us. Nevertheless, um, we are endeavouring to, to, to make sure that children have a place um, in, in the area that they can. Um, and I can say to you that although parents may not have been told as yet by the National for Council for Special Education, there is a reason for that. And the reason for that is there's still ongoing engagement um, with some of the schools. Um, they are sensitive, confidential discussions. Um, and we, we don't want to do something that would, would upset that in any way, um, because you know it, it does take um, sometimes a, a radical shift for a school to make that jump um, and we want to try and nurture that relationship and bring the, the school with us and again to go back to the section 37 I will use it where I have to but in circumstances where the schools are collaborating and will open the special classes um, then I think we should give them the space to do that but I hope um, that the, the, the parents will be told in early course when their child has a place um, because obviously they need to plan uh, for September and to make sure that they have those places um, in, in good time. The short, medium and long-term planning um, uh, is undertaken on a national and a regional level and it's based on projected uh, future population demographics and the average percentage of school-going population requiring special education places. And that's sort of a general rule uh, for, for how this is looked at. But there will always be children for whatever reason they may have moved from a special class to mainstream or indeed from mainstream to a special a school or, 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 or moved to completely to go into a completely different locality uh, and, and then it can be difficult um, to to anticipate thank you, thank you, those sort of circumstances but we need to allow some 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 room there for, for those type of situations th th no th thank you Gar 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 Gar